pray this morning before I start. Father, Holy Spirit, come here and have it my uh, words as I seek to just bring your wisdom. Let me not uh, go one step ahead nor lag one step behind your spirit, Father. And uh, be with us here this morning, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Um, so I'm John Ritchie. I think most of you probably know me. There might be a few of you here that don't. But, uh, so I've been a member here for 26 years, Pat and I. Um, <coughs> I have a prayer on the heart I need to, I need to share. So I yep, go ahead. What is it? Heavenly Father, Lord God, we, uh, we ask you to bless our, our servicemen and women that are overseas, especially this time of year, Lord, the depression and, and just the horror that these people are seeing. Lord, we ask you to uh, calm our demons and uh, let them rest peacefully and uh, bring them home safely. And, uh, we ask you to uh, bless all the events, past, present, and future. And uh, just thank you, Lord, for uh, letting them serve us and us serve you. Um, so I said I'm, I've been here 26 years. Um, I just wanted to share a, a story with you this morning because I feel like God's worked through um, events in my life and they've really shaped me and He's taught me some things. But uh, um, in August of 2012, I was working and I got a phone call. Uh, that uh, from my older brother Doug, and he said my brother Dave had uh, disappeared, He'd gone off in the woods. And what had happened, and I share this story with you not to make you feel sorry for him, but you need to know where I'm going with uh, what I had to learn. Uh, so I got this phone call uh, that my older brother had disappeared into the woods. Uh, I took time off work, I went for a whole week to look for him. Um, what had happened with him is he had had a bad reaction to some medicines he'd been taken and he ran off in the woods and was never seen again. Well, he's in heaven now and uh, I'm kind of jealous. He, he beat me there. <laughs> I, I think that's a really cool place. It's a better place than where we are here. But uh, anyway, again, I, I, don't, I don't share that part of the story make you feel bad, but in the hopes that maybe what I learned, some of you can learn too, through those events. So while I'm down there, I went down, it was in the area of Bayfield that he disappeared, and I went down there to look for him. And uh, I spent a week looking for him. My son Michael was in the Navy. Some of you know him too as well. He's awesome. I, I just think he's great, but of course I'm dad, so I'm going to say that, but he is awesome. And uh, anyway, he came down to help me uh, look, and uh, we had found a cabin in the middle of the woods that we decided was a good place to look. And so we went to look for my brother. We hiked out into uh, unfamiliar terrain, logging trails, trails in the woods. Those of you who spend time in the woods know what that's like. So you, somewhere you've never been before. So I was smart. The one good thing I did, I did bring this, uh, I brought this GPS with me, and I set, uh, I set a waypoint at the car when I got out of the car. And I'm going to pass this around to you this morning, give you a quick GPS lesson. There's circles on it you're going to see. Um, the biggest one represents the horizon. The smaller ones circle in until basically you're in the middle. The little black squares are satellites that are orbiting the Earth. Um, that's what they represent. The black bars on the bottom are fixes where uh, this thing has actually seen the satellites. So some of it's a tactile. We see, you know, so I just just take a quick look at that, pass that around, take that, send that around that way. Um, so that's the GPS again. That's going to help me get back, right, in the story. So this is a compass, okay? By the way, sorry, the title of my sermon this morning is uh, Following God's Compass. Um, so this compass, you know, reds in the shed, make a long story short, there's a lot of little numbers. Uh, this works with the magnetic field of the earth, and it'll help us too. So I was using this compass too. So here's a compass. Let's pass that around. Okay. 
hang on, see what I So I'm in a strange place. I'm in an unfamiliar place. And uh, I know I'm going to have to get back to the car. But anyway, so we take off. We hike in uh, about five miles. And we sit until it's dark, pretty much pitch black. And we start to head out. Um, we're, going, we're going back. And so I alertly turn on that GPS. That is the GPS we used, actually. And it tells me it's 1.5 miles to the car. And uh, it gives me a compass heading to walk, right? Sounds pretty simple. <coughs> so my son and I look at each other. And we do the compass, and it's, it's that way. And uh, we look at each other. What do we say? We say, well, man, that, that's not the right way. That, it's this way. It ain't that way. It's this way. So we take off. We start hiking this way. And we hike that way. Hike is a loose term. We stumble around and bump into trees. And, you know, but uh, we hike for about 20 minutes. Um, and uh, we turn the GPS back on. And uh, when we started off, remember it said 1.5 miles to the car, right? We turn it on, it says, you are 1.85 miles from the car. That wasn't what we thought we were going to see. We're further away from the car. So at this point, we took a little break. We sat down on a log. We had a come to Jesus meeting. <laughs> it's my son and I in the middle of anywhere on the log. And it's kind of a little sidetrack here, but I just thought I'd bring this up. Why is it that everybody calls when there's conflict or issues or something at work, it's a come to Jesus meeting. What's up with that? They don't they know Jesus. Anyway, that, that was free. I just thought that was that's kind of I think that's kind of ironic. Come to Jesus meeting. So we sit on this log and I pray, Lord, you know, we really need to find our way back. Um, <laughs> People are waiting for us. This is a situation where everyone's a little upset anyway, with people being missing and gone. And uh, we start hiking again. This time, you know, we do look at the GPS, and we attempt to follow the correct reading on our compass this time. So pretty soon, I'm hiking along, and my son keeps telling me, uh, Oh, Dad, a little more to the left, and there's trees, so you got to hike around trees. And, and so we hike for about 40 minutes or so, and, uh, you know, turn it back on. It says, you are 1.45 miles to the car. So I'm like, oh, okay, this is working. This is better. This is cool. Um, but through it all, you know, I'm hiking, and my son keeps telling me, Oh, you gotta go a little more to the right, Dad. You gotta go a little more to the left, Dad. And uh, we're working together, see? I wasn't smart enough to bring a flashlight. That's another part of this story. We have to work together. I had a lighter. Well, that GPS there is an old one. It's not backlit. So we had to use a lighter to shine on the face of the GPS and then shine on the face of the uh, compass. It's pitch black. And so we're working together. It works out, I'm the lead man with the compass, and he's the GPS man, because he doesn't trust me with it, he won't give it to me. <laughs> he thinks we're gonna get lost. But we have to work together. He's giving me the reading, and I'm following the heading, okay? The two of us are lining up together. But we're still kind of thrashing around. We're making progress, but gosh, it's taken a long, long, long time. And uh, at that point, we were really tired. I mean, we've been hiking for an hour and a half, long time. We still got a long ways to go to the car, so we take a little break. And uh, we sit down again, and we drink a little water, we eat a little bar, and uh, I pray, Lord, man, this is just really hard. I wish you'd help us uh, get back to the car a little bit better. And, uh, at that point, I looked up in the sky, and I could see all the stars. And there was a star. 
exactly on the right heading we need to be on. It was a little bit uh, obscure, a little bit cloudy, but uh, I thought, man, man, I'll follow that star. That might work. That might be cool. And I didn't say anything to my son because I thought, well, it might not be the right thing to do. But uh, all of a sudden, it went from, oh no, a little left. No, a little right to, Dad, good heading. Wow, Dad. Uh, six tenths of a mile to the car. Four tenths of a mile to the car. Good heading, Dad. What, what are you doing? Well, son, I'm following the stars. God put them there for us. To bring us back. When we got back to the car, um, not much through me, but I think God brought us there. Uh, one of the scriptures that uh, I just want to read to you that God put in my mind through this story is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Um, Trust the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will and all that you do, and he will show you which path to take. So, some of the questions God put in my mind through this, and some of the answers he's given me are as follows. <clears throat> Why didn't why didn't I trust the GPS? Why? Why did I go this way when the GPS didn't go that way? And you know, I think God's like our spiritual GPS. You know, He sets our course. He tells us which way to go. You know, He put those satellites up there that are orbiting the Earth, and they're in perfect balance. You know, we men think we've done it, but really God keeps them orbiting. God created the, he's above all of that. He created the moon, the stars, the planets, the universe. I mean, here I am, you know. So God gives us things that uh, we're supposed to do. And one of the lessons here for me, he'll, he'll, uh, and see, God doesn't, God's a gentleman. He doesn't. Um, he's not going to yell at you. He whispers quietly. He, he, and God doesn't speak to me. I don't know how you guys are. God doesn't, doesn't speak to me audibly. Okay, but these thoughts come into my head, okay, unbidden, in the quiet, in the stillness. These thoughts come in that I know they're not of me. But what do I do with them? This is the lesson. What do I do with them? Well, I'm really, I'll confess to you, I'm really good about uh, saying, Lord, you know, that doesn't seem like the way I should go. I think I should go that way. <laughs> well, we all know how that works out. Not that great. <laughs> so that's a lesson for me. Okay? When God gives me something to do, do it. Whenever that friend walks by that you know is having a hard time, when you know that they're struggling, when you know they're not working, stop. When God tells you, when he taps me on the shoulder and says, John, go say hi to him. I'll just confess right now as I stand up here with you. I've not done that. I've gone the other way. Oh, man, he always talks. He, I can't, I got I got stuff to do. That's going to be a half an hour. I I, I can't do that right now. Right? That's We have those conversations in our head, right? No. No. Go. Do it. Lesson one for me. Trust God when He tells me which way to go. So, how do I know it's God talking whenever I hear that little voice in my head? The little whisper, the thought that's unbidden. Um, 
how do I know? How do I know? I mean, maybe that's another thing that goes on in a little conversation. No, God wouldn't want me to do that. Um, nah, I don't think so. Well, how do we know? Well, I think for me, um, it's a matter of being in the Word. God's Word is our filter. He gave us the book, you know, the Bible it's called. We read it. Um, there's a harmony in it. And I'll share some more scriptures with you this morning to support what I'm talking about. But uh, as we glean and gather information from the Word, um, we're better able to evaluate these thoughts that we have. And God will never give us something that's wrong. He'll never give us something that is bad. When it's from God, it's good. And it's right. Go help that guy. You know, go mow his yard. Go give him money. When I was unemployed one time, I had $100 in my pocket. I had a brother I was talking to. I was sitting in a restaurant. And uh, he was telling me how he needed to pay his heating bill. And, uh, you know, he, he needed money. And he didn't know what he was going to do. And I had a hundred dollar bill in my wallet. And I was like, Lord, you know I only got a hundred bucks. I'm collecting unemployment. I don't want to give him that money. But I'll confess, what I did do, I took that money out of my wallet and I gave it to him. I just folded it up and kind of went, hey, dude, take this. And uh, he's told me three different times since then, that was about four years ago, John, you do not know how much that helped me. And so maybe that's one time, one little time I got it right. I'm not going to tell you about other times I got it wrong. Because, <laughs> you know, we all, we all, we all do that. So how do I know if it's God talking? It's going to be good. It's going to be right. It's going to follow the harmony of his scriptures. Let me share a couple more uh, this morning. Uh, Proverbs 16.3 uh, says, Commit your actions to the Lord, and your plans will succeed. So when I commit my actions to the Lord, when I follow what He's telling me to do, it's going to be good. It's going to succeed. It's going to be successful. Psalms 32.8 says, The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life, and I will advise you, and I will watch over you. It's pretty simple. He tells me which way to go. I go there. He's going to watch over me. One other thing that God taught me through this experience was that... Um, we're not alone. Okay, I was with my son. We were button heads, like dads and sons do. And it was not until I began to take the compass heading and read it, and he began to take the GPS and keep giving me a heading, and we worked together through it that we began to get out of the situation that we were in. It took two of us. So I tend to be a loner. I tend to not develop close relationships with people. It's a struggle for me to let people in. Um, but that's wrong. God didn't create us to be that way. God created us for community like this. And I look out, and the only reason I can get up here and talk so freely is I know y'all would be nice to me. Vinny was joking at me that he'd throw tomatoes at me, but I know it's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're all a community. We're friends under underneath God's word. And I and I I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful for today. And I'm so thankful that um, I was I'm able to get up here and talk to you about this. God's really brought uh, my family and I through a hard time. And he continues to teach us lessons. And Nikki and I were talking this morning, and I think that some of the things we said are just crucial, that during difficult times, God um, 
is at work in us, and it's just a process, and we need to allow him to work in us. We need to give him the freedom to be in us, and we need to look at him for direction. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Be not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he'll make your path straight. And I want to share one more scripture with you this morning. I can find it. <laughs> this one's out of the message. I like the way it said it. Psalm 910. <clears throat> Psalm chapter 9, verse 10. God is a safe house for the battered. That's us. You know? I know I'm not the only one. There's some of the other house that are, that are being battered around too and you're having a hard time. We've, we've seen hard times. It's not a bed of roses, this life. It's a safe house for the battered, a sanctuary during bad times. The moment you are alive, I uh, can't talk, the moment you arrive, you relax and you're never sorry that you knocked on the door. That's the message, Psalm 910. I just think that's so cool. Um, you know, this is a refuge, um, a place where we can come. It's like an oasis in the desert when we come, uh, when we're together, when we're here. And I want each and every one of you to know that uh, I just really treasure these times that we have together. They're very important to me because I do not take them for granted. Um, and uh, thank you so much for listening to me. Um, let's close with a prayer this morning. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for the Son and this precious life that we have. And I just pray you be with us here as we go through this week. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.